Welcome to section 6.5. All right, gentle people, section 6.5 has a really simple concept. So if you wanna go ahead, read the section and then go ahead and tackle this lecture. It makes a big difference if you guys come into these lectures uh, with knowing some material. So I wanna really encourage you guys to read close to when you experience this lecture. So let's start out with a real simple question. Go ahead and tell me what the equilibrium constant is for this particular reaction. All right, ladies and gentlemen, what I hope your reading told you guys is that we do not count solids or liquids in the equilibrium expression. So if I wanted to write the KP expression here, the KP equals my products. Well, in this case, it's a solid. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a one for solids or liquids. And then I'm going to follow through with the rest. So products over reactants raised to their stoichiometric coefficients. And in this case, my reactants are the only things that are not solids or liquids, and they're both to the first power. And so that is the crux of 6.5. Up until now, we've been talking about homogeneous equilibrium, where everything was either aqueous or dissolved in solution, or everything was gases, and that means all the reactants and products are in the same phase. So if something has a concentration or something's in a gas, we include that in the equilibrium expression. However, if something is a pure liquid or a pure solid, then we do not consider this as part of the equilibrium expression. And the reason behind this is if you think about it, the concentration of a solid inside a solid is astronomical. You can do a thought experiment and figure out what the concentration of water is in water, meaning what's the moles of water over the liters of volume, and you get something ginormous, like water's concentration in water is 55 molar. So this isn't going to change concentration during the course of the reaction. And so this is why we essentially say that we are just going to make solids and liquids one because they don't change during the course of the experiment. This also includes solvents. So the solvent is not going to be part of our equilibrium expression. So if we have a heterogeneous equilibrium, meaning I have two different phases, make sure you're only focusing on things that are aqueous or dissolved in solution or gases. So if I were to write the KP expression on here, the KP is going to be my products. So that's going to be the pressure of H2O over my reactants. And since it's a liquid, I'm just going to put it over one. So my KP for this equilibrium is just the pressure of H2O. So with that said, let's take a look at this equilibrium. Let's take a look at the decomposition of calcium carbonate. What's gonna happen is calcium carbonate is gonna decompose into calcium oxide and CO2 gas. So with that said, let's take a look at this picture. What I have is I'm gonna have my calcium carbonate I'm going to have my calcium oxide. And so what I want to say is that in each one of these containers, I have differing amounts of calcium carbonate and my calcium oxide. Now, in which one of these containers is the pressure of CO2 going to be higher? All right, ladies and gentlemen, what you should have answered is neither. So let's go ahead and write the KP expression for this. So the KP is going to be the pressure of my products. So that's going to be the pressure of CO2. But the other product is a solid. So that's going to be times 1. And I'm going to divide by my reactants, which also happens to be a solid. So I'm going to put 1 for my solid. So that means the KP is just based off the pressure of CO2. What you'll see is it doesn't matter how much solid material I'm going to have. All that matters is I'm going to go to equilibrium, and equilibrium is only based off the pressure of CO2. So the amount of CO2 in both of these containers is going to be exactly the same because everything goes to equilibrium.
I hope that made sense, can one be? And remember to stay safe.